Hello, today's video is to review some of the concepts we looked at in class. Um, and uh, just basically working with radicals. So the big idea here is to remember that when you see radicals, which are square roots, cube roots, everything like that, um, they operate the same way as exponents because every uh, radical is in fact just an exponent in disguise. So uh, remember the square root is really the half power. That's significant because if there's a rule that applies to exponents, then the same rule applies to radicals. If there's a rule that doesn't apply to exponents, then that same rule does not apply to radicals. So, just to jump ahead, um, here, of course, what we're going to do is divide these into perfect squares and non-perfect squares, and then take the square root of what we can and leave what we can't. So the same thing's going to happen in number two, except we have some more division and multiplication to do along with it. So we start with um, 20 being uh, the square root of 4 times 5, 4 being perfect, 5 being prime, and uh, then we could break them up into two separate radicals. And since the square root of 4 is 2, I do that. And then 2 divided by 2 is 1. So this is the square root of 5. Now somebody else could choose to do this a different way. They can look at 2 as actually the square root of 4, which is true. So we're, we're basically making it more complex. But now I can apply a power of a quotient and just uh, divide first and then take the square root later. And 20 divided by 4 is 5. So you can see I got the same results regardless of my approach. Now here, we have uh, uh, part C, square root of 22 over 2. Um, I can't use the first method because there are no perfect squares in the square root of 22. So that's why I have a second method, which enables me then to make the 2 the square root of 4, and make that a square root of 11 halves, which is the square root of 5 and a half. So um, there's usually a problem with part C because people can't use the same methods for A and B that they use for part C, because usually they start here applying the same method as above but here's an alternative approach. So, problem three says simplify each radical and then add the similar radicals. Um, the idea here is, uh, you know, just to make sure that people know that the square root of 18 plus the square root of 8 is not the square root of 26. You don't add what's under the radicals. You can do that with multiplication, but you cannot do that with addition. So what can you do to simplify an expression like this? Well, use the same technique as in problem one. You break up into perfect and non-perfect squares. And so the square root of 25 is 5, the square root of 49 is 7, and I'm left with square roots of 3 for every single expression. So this is 20 square root of 3, and then we're going to take away 14 square roots of 3 and add 1 back. So in other words, a grand total of 7 square roots of 3. So to check this, you put 7 square root of 3 in the calculator, and you put all of this stuff in the calculator, and you should end up with the same number. Hence, you can see this is clearly simple compared to that. This is kind of a skill that uh, mathematicians use as they explore math further. So this is not important in your daily life. This is only important for understanding how math works and you know, helping you advance in the course. Anyway, um, just uh, oh yeah, for part C here, we're going to look at uh, the square root of 28 as the square root of 7 times 4. We're going to look at the square root of 88 as the square root of 22 times 4. And the square root of 112 is 16 times 7. 7. Makes you feel like you're doing this wrong. But anyway, I'm doing the same process as before, I end up with this. We have 6 square root of 7, 2 times the square root of 22, minus 8 times the square root of 7. The square root of 22 and the square root of 7 are not alike, so 2 square root of 22 has nothing to do with 6 square root of 7. But what we can do is say there's 6 square root of 7 less 8 square root of 7, so we're going to collect those like terms which is really just factoring. And I factored out a 2 there. Um, quickly, you can see the uh, uh, example for E. It's done the same way. It's the only difference is a 1 there. So you just leave the 1 there when you're done. Nothing to it. For uh, problem set 4, this is uh, um, expressions that look a lot like the quadratic formula solutions. Um, one of the ways to approach this is to look at uh, as divide by 5 as really the multiplication of 1 fifth. So that makes it easier to see the distributive property in action. We can take uh, 1 fifth times 10 is 2, and 1 fifth times 5 squared of 2 is squared of 2. Another way to look at it, though, is to, to not have to write it as a fraction, but understand that it is, in fact, distributed. You distribute division and multiplication into addition. So instead of saying distribute a fraction, I'm just going to say 4 over 2 minus square root of 8 over 2. But I made square root of 8 perfect and non-perfect, which gives me ultimately 2 minus the square root of 2. So this is going to be the square root of 4 is going to be 2, which is going to divide with that to 1. 
and then 4 divided by 2 is 1, 2. Some uh, last examples here. Um, first of all, looking at this set, it's uh, now we're starting to get into some more variable expressions and understand the same exact principles apply. We don't have to learn a new set of rules here. Um, for example, we look at uh, a to the fourth. Take the square root, it's going to be a squared. Now, there's a couple ways to see why this makes sense. Number one, a squared times a squared equals a to the fourth. When I say the square root of 25 is 5, I know that's true because 5 times 5 equals 25. Similarly, I can square my result, and I should get back to what's under the radical. A better way to think about this, of course, is that a to the fourth square root is really a to the fourth to the one half. Then I apply power of a power, half of four is two. So really, in essence, <clears throat> when I'm taking square roots of numbers, I'm taking literally half of their exponent, which means a to the tenth is going to become a to the fifth when I square root it, a to the two n, half of two n is one n, so that's what's going to happen when I square root it. Notice if we check this answer, um, a to the n, if we take a to the n times a to the n, the power or the product rule says we should make this a to the n plus n, and that, of course, is a to the 2n. So it works right no matter how you slice it. Now, for, finally, for this one, we have uh, the square root of a cubed. Most people's reflexes would be to make this a to the 3 halves power. However, if we're given our questions in radical form, we should not answer in exponential form. We should answer back in radical form, which gives us in a circular spiral of doing nothing and just saying things synonymously. So just as a reminder, we have square root of 8 down here, and if I had the square root of 8, I understand 8 is actually 2 cubed, which is really 2 squared times 2. And 2 squared is a perfect square, and 2 is not, so I take the square root of 2 squared. Ultimately, then, if I take the square root of a perfect cube, I get 2 times the square root of 2. Well, it should be the same exact difference up in here. That is, I take the square root of a cubed, it's really there's a perfect square, a squared, and then a non-perfect square, a, and I separate them, and I get the same result. By the way, to check that, I could make this uh, a to the 1 times a to the 1 half, which is equal to a to the 1 and 1 half, which is a to the 3 halves which again is the other form of truth. But the radical form for a to the 3 halves is a squared of a. Moving on. This one gives people some trouble. a to the 2n plus 1. Um, and there's a couple ways to look at it, and one of the ways to look at it is a to the 2n times a to the 1. That's the product rule reversed. Then I can separate them, and now I can take the square root of a to the 2n, which is a to the n, and the square root of a, which I just leave. Um, I was just thinking out loud. Uh, then, you know, the other way you could look at this is uh, you could do that thing where I distribute the one half power up in here. So a to the two n minus one, two n minus one to the one half power, and then I'm going to use power of a power. We have a to the um, n minus one half. Is it minus? should be plus, sorry, plus one, plus one half, which using the product rule is really a to the n times a to the one half, which you will see a to the n square root of a, same thing I got. So remember that the properties of exponents are always available to you when you're working with uh, square roots and radicals and other things like that. Moving on. Um, so here, I'm demonstrating that when we had the square root of a number, we break it into perfect squares and non-perfect squares. Well, let's not be numberists, shall we? We do the same thing when we're working here. So, for example, I can see that 8 is broken up into 4 times 2. 4 perfect, 2 not. x to the 5th, that's x to the 4th times x, because x to the 4th is a perfect square, that's an even power. x to the 1 is not and x y to the sixth is a perfect square in and of itself because it's an even power. The square root of 4 is 2, the square root of x to the fourth is x squared, the square root of y to the sixth is y cubed, the square root of 2x, the square root of 2x, that's all there is to it. Same thing can be done here. 27 is the product of 9 and 3. x to the ninth is the product of x to the eighth and x. x cubed is y, or sorry, y cubed is y squared times y. And z, what is that? 
z to the fifth is z to the fourth times z. So, perfect squares, non-perfect squares, square root of 9 is 3, square root of x to the eighth is x to the fourth, y, z squared, square root of all the other stuff. Nothing to it. <clears throat> Finally, uh, these true or false questions, um, we should understand these right out of the gate, and we can check this using uh, substitutions for a and b, but uh, here, this is the uh, power of a product, so that's why I can do that. Here, I cannot do that because there is no power of a sum. Part C, I cannot do that because there is no power of a sum. Again, uh, this is true by uh, power of a power. And this one is the one that gives people the most trouble because it seems ridiculous that it could be true. And then they go and check and they find out that it is. So to do this, I'm going to first recall what happens when I square a binomial like a plus b. a plus b times a plus b, which is a squared plus 2ab oh, plus b squared. I get it. This stuff right here can be factored into the expression a plus b quantity squared. And when I take the square root of a plus b squared, I just get a plus b. So that's it. I hope you find this helpful. Have a good day.